Oh, there's no doubt about it. Boats are full of surprises. You never know what's going to fall out or overboard, especially the skipper of the boat, the one who's running it, the one who knows how to start the diesel engine, the one who's familiar with lowering the sails and coming back for a man overboard drill. The generally accepted solution is a personal flotation device. I call them life jackets. And in fact, the Coast Guard requires we have one for every member of the crew. I keep them in a lazarette hatch in the cockpit. We also have two CO2 inflatable personal flotation devices, which my friend Max wears all the time and doesn't seem to interfere with his movements at all. Even the dog has one. Life jackets. I never wear them. I use a personal safety harness. They can be floppy and hard to put on, so I lay it out first. And once on, I find that I, I forget that it's there. It attaches by a six-foot tether to a jack line, which is nothing more than a strong piece of webbing strung from the cabin house to the bow, always inside the stays. The tether goes around the jack line to keep you on the boat, and here's why. The top sides of modern boats are very high off the water. Just look at how far it is just to reach down to pick up a hat that fell overboard. The top sides of the Ericsson 38 are somewhere in between high and low. The tether keeps me, should I be thrown overboard, in a position something like this where it's possible to get back on board. I'm sure I could do it, but right now, Hand me a stepladder, please. In fact, I've concluded that for me, I don't need any life jacket or tether at all as long as I can easily swim to shore. But once you get used to this system, it's very easy to use and it does keep you on the boat. So, Ross, do you think you could swim ashore from here? I think it would be a long swim in 60 degree water. We're only about a mile offshore. Yes, only a mile offshore. But last year when I was in this very position, I lost overboard my 13 foot long cockpit cover. And after three or four successful tries coming up next to it, I never could get it back on board because I hadn't put a leash loop on it. I knew exactly where it was going to wind up on the beach. And after coming back to the club, I walked the beach for an hour or two hours and found nothing. It was extremely disturbing because of the possibility that it might have been a dog, or worse than that, who had fallen over irretrievably. I don't say my way is right. I only say, think it through from the beginning. The responsibility of a skipper is very great, and if he falls off the boat, it makes problems for everyone. A colleague of mine 20 years ago was sailing to Catalina with his wife and 12-year-old daughter. He fell overboard. They had no way to get back to him. He drowned in front of their eyes. Life jackets are great for kids on dinghies or people on paddle boards or anybody who's not sure of themselves. But on a cruising boat, there is no substitute for one hand for you and one hand for the ship. And so I tend not to put kids in life jackets, but to lecture them on holding on. And if I see them not holding on, they come back to the cockpit right away. It's all on us, you know. We're the ones with the experience. The skipper cannot fall off his boat.